I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. We'll look into a very important property which can help us solve many questions related to integration. I know integration is a very tricky topic, so we need to approach very systematically and keep a record of all the integrals found so that we could move forward and solve difficult questions. Here is a very simple and important concept to remember. We will concentrate on the integral of derivative of a function divided by the function itself is actually ln which is log to the base e of the function plus c. So we'll begin by proving this particular thing, which you can also state as a theorem. Now, based on this theorem, we'll have applications. In this video, we'll talk about very straightforward and simple applications where even by inspection, you can write down the answers, right? So in all these cases, you can write, you can solve by inspection also. Correct? So that simple it will be <clears throat> once you understand the concepts, right? So let's begin with what the theorem for us is and that is integral of derivative of a function divided by the function itself is ln f of x plus c. Now here is a proof for the same. we need to find the integral of the derivative of the function over the function indefinite integral right so let us say let let us say this integral is i right so and then we'll continue by substitution we'll say let f of x be equal to t. Now, if I differentiate both sides, then what do I get? We get f dash x, which is a derivative of f of x dx, is equal to dt. Correct? So, this particular substitution which we just made makes our question very simple. Now, we can write that our integral i is indeed equal to the numerator here, f prime x dx, is dt, right? So that is dt. And 1 over f of x is t. So what we get here is 1 over t dt. Do you get the idea? So the top part, which is this, is basically equal to dt. Do you see that? So we get that dt here and 1 over f of x we have written as 1 over t since we substituted f of x as t. Now you know that the integral from antiderivatives or reverse differentiation is basically ln t plus c. Right? This is indefinite integral so many functions could actually be the solution of this particular integral and t was f of x. So we'll write this as ln f of x plus c. So that is a very simple and straightforward proof for our theorem, which is a well-known theorem, of course, that the integral of the derivative over the function itself is ln f of x plus c. Correct. Now here are six related questions. I would like you to see them, right? So here, denominator is x squared minus x plus 5. The derivative is 2x minus 1. And therefore, the integral is ln of the denominator. Same thing here. x to the power of 4 plus 1. If you find the derivative, you get x cubed, right? 4 times x cubed. So it could be a bit tricky at times. You may have to adjust. 
So, so I like you to now pause the video, write down the integrals of all these given to you, right? So you can say find the following integrals. Right. Let's continue and follow these steps to find the integrals of the questions taken. And that will give us a far better understanding of this particular concept. Perfect. So again, we have the integral. We'll say let the integral i be equal to 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 5 dx. We are going to make a substitution that let t is equal to x squared minus x plus 5. Okay. So we get dt is equal to 2x minus 1, right, dx. So you can clearly see that the numerator 2x minus 1 dx can be replaced with dt and the denominator by 1 over t. So we are now trying to find this integral which is equal to 1 over t dt, correct? Which clearly is equal to ln t plus c and t is x squared minus x plus 5. Does make sense to you, right? So the important thing here is if the numerator is derivative of denominator. apply this strategy. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Now sometimes we may have to do some rework, right? Now here, let's get back to this. We do recognize that derivative of x to the power of 4 is related with x cubed. So we'll put t equal to x to the power of 4 plus 1 and we know dt is 4 times x cubed dx, right? Now, this really doesn't match with what we have. So, we need to find the integral of x cubed over x to the power 4 plus 1 dx. Now, we know that 4x cubed dx is this. We could actually rewrite this as 1 over 4, which is a constant, times 4x cubed over x to the power 4 plus 1 dx. Now that could be written as 1 over 4 integral. Now 4x cubed dx is dt, right? So you could write this as 1 over t dt. And now what you get is 1 over 4 ln t plus c, which is 1 over 4 ln x to the power of 4 plus 1 plus c. It does make sense to you. So at times we may have to do a little bit of manipulations so to get your answer. I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on and take the next example. We have some trigonometric functions for you now. Tan x. You can always write this integral which is integral of tan x dx in terms of sine and cosine. So tan, you know, is sine x over cosine x, right? And the beauty is that derivative of cos x is minus sine x. So they are related, right? So now we'll do t equals to cos x dt equals to derivative of cos x, which is minus sine x dx. Okay, so now we can write that our integral is indeed equal to what? Since we get this as minus, so we have minus of 1 over t, right, dt. And therefore, this integral is negative ln t plus c. And in our case, it is ln. t is cos x, right? So put it back into the equation, right? So these are the steps which you need to follow. Perfect. 
Now similarly, let's do the next one. We could write this as integral of cos x over sin x dx, right? See how simple it is. So we are saying that our integral now is equal to, you can write this, 1 over sin x times cos x dx. We are substituting t with 1 over sin x. So we know dt is equal to, sorry, t as sin x, sorry. Derivative is cos x. So we get this as cos x dx. Okay. So now we can substitute cos x dx with dt and 1 over sin x is 1 over t. So our integral now is equal to 1 over t dt, which is ln t plus c. And now getting back to our substitution, t sin x ln sin x plus c. Perfect. So that is how you are going to do it. So I hope you are gaining the confidence. The whole idea here is to get you started with a new concept. And then as we move on, you will be in a position to solve even some difficult questions. Correct? Let's continue. So here we have integral of uh, e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x over e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x dx. Now, the denominator's derivative is the numerator. Clear? So we'll make a substitution that t equals to e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x and dt will be e to the power of x and that becomes minus e to the power of minus x dx, right? And therefore, we can write down our integral as that is the numerator, right? So that is dt, right? So we can write 1 over t dt or this is equals to ln of t plus c and therefore the answer is ln of all this which is e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x plus c. Clear? Now here is the last example for you. This is not straightforward. So we have 1 minus tan x over 1 plus tan x. Now the derivative for tan x is secant square x, right? Now, how do I get, uh, uh, utilize what we have already done in this particular case? So, what we will do here is that we'll substitute first tan x as ratio of sin x and cosine x so that we really understand what this integral is. So, we could write this as integral of 1 minus sin x over cos x divided by 1 plus sine x over cos x dx. Now, multiplying by cos x, we get integral of cos x minus sine x over cos x plus sine x dx. Now, do you see? The derivative of cos x is minus sin x. The derivative of sin x is cosin x. So we get it in the same form that the numerator is the derivative of denominator. So again, the strategy t equals to cos x plus sin x. So dt is equals to minus sin x plus cos x dx. Correct? And therefore, our integral now is 1 over t dt, and that can be written as ln, well, instead of I write down this answer, denominator, which is cos x plus sin x, right? Or you could write sin x plus cos x. So this cos x plus sin x plus c. Does it make sense to you? So that is how we can do quite a few questions. If you recognize that the numerator is a derivative of denominator, then within a second, you can write down the solution. You get the idea. 
Now, these questions are very popular in many multiple choice test papers. So, first set of 10 questions, you may have these kinds. And in no time, you can provide the solution, saving time for the later half of your test paper. So, I hope the concept helps. Now, in the next video, we'll take up slightly more intricate examples where we'll be using the same policy, the same theorem to solve slightly difficult questions. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views about this approach. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Thanks for your time and all the best.